Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today with another Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guide. This time it is Achek the Wenderin. Uh, really, really cool champion today. We're going to take a break from the world's strongest. We've done a, a Foley and uh, who else did we do recently on the main account? Uh, Battle Kazar in terms of fully empowered, really good champions. Today, again, we're going to take a break, kind of more of a mid-game build, maybe even an early game build. But of course, we'll talk about this champion in a broad kind of macro sense to why he is so good, specifically in Spider, but really as a carry in progression all over the game. Uh, first, a few shout outs. Diana says Ryan the Conjurer or Achak, please. Ash, you got it. We actually did Ryan the Conjurer uh, yesterday or two days ago. So check that out as well. We have Mateus, day one of asking for Achak. Well, you got it. And we have Tufik Tefix, uh, also requesting. So uh, Tufik Tufik. Hopefully I've gotten that right, man. Uh, asking you shall receive, guys. Keep the requests coming. Uh, I always go by your request when choosing my next champion. So no lore, unfortunately, for Achek the Wender. No official lore, but he is an epic demon spawn champion, support champion at that. Very cool aesthetics on this guy. I, I love the... I just really think he looks awesome, you know, especially for the Demon Spawn faction. I like the white kind of, what do you call it, palette, I guess, on this champion. And I just, aesthetically, he looks really cool. I will say that I can't really, I can't really see his face. His eyes? Are, are we supposed to see his eyes? I don't know. Anyway, he's a cool little horned Demon Spawn epic beast. Uh, Devour All Hope is A1, attacks one enemy, has a 30, if you book them nine times, nine levels on this A1, I should say, you get a whopping 50% chance of decreasing the duration of a random buff if the target is under an HP burn debuff, also has a 50% chance of decreasing the target's term by 15% if they're under a freeze. This dude's kit is all about synergies with freeze and HP burns. And a little support as well. Speaking of support, Cannibal Might. This luckily only takes one book to get the cooldown down to a four turn cooldown. We get block debuffs for one turn and the big version of Strengthen for two turns. Big version of Strengthen for two turns from an epic champion on a four turn cooldown is pretty dang good. However, block debuffs, I mean, it's a nice to have, right? But for one turn on every four turns, it's really not incredibly dependable unless you time it perfectly. But again, it's a nice to have. I'm not complaining, but we love to see this either on a three turn cooldown when booked or the block debuffs lasting for two turns just like the strengthen does either way it's a really really robust support ability to have on your team especially if you don't already have a block debuffer or a strengthen on your team frostfire gale attacks all enemies has a 70 make it 90 percent chance when booked of placing a freeze debuff for one turn on enemies whose attack is higher than their defense that would that would include spiderlings right very important here has a 90% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for one turn on enemies whose defense is equal to or higher than their attack. This is on a three turn cooldown. So we have a 90% freeze on a three turn cooldown against most mobs, against most champions, against most spiderlings or whatever you want to attack, right? Twisted Hunger is where all of this kit comes together and this is the beauty and the magic of Achak the Wenderin. Twisted Hunger heals all allies by 5% of their max HP every time an enemy under an HP burn debuff gets a turn. So if you're setting up Achak with a burner on the Spiderlings, he'll come in and freeze them with the A3 and then you are constantly healing everybody and fills the turn meter of all allies by 10% every time an enemy under a freeze debuff gets a turn. That's insane. It's an insane passive. It's truly one of the most powerful and unique passives in the game, especially for epic champions. There is no cooldown or anything like that. It's just always active again and again and again and again. You will see Twisted Hunger proc. Add to that defense in all battles by 25% is going to make Achak the Wenderin a great carry and or a lead for your teams in basically any dungeon where you could use this sort of kit, which is incredibly conducive to supporting your team and keeping keeping them alive, especially, and keeping them going, especially with that passive. The base speed, very, very low, 94, unfortunately, on this champion. But again, part of the beauty is, is he doesn't need to take turns for this passive to activate. So uh, somewhat mitigated by that amazing Twisted Hunger. His defense is okay at 1,200, and his HP is, you know, serviceable at 17.5k. Let's go ahead and check the reviews really quickly here. Spider's Den, it's a 10. It's, it's, it's a 10 out of 10, or a 5 out of 5, Ash. The rating is 
don't go up to 10, bro. Uh, Faction Wars, a great control for Faction Wars. Arena, you don't see a lot of Achek in the arena. However, you could use him if you wanted to. Uh, getting those freezes out there on the enemy team is always a good thing. You can use him, as I mentioned, in basically any area of any dungeon as a support champion, right? Great support option for you guys. Let's go ahead and show you how I have him built on the... I don't want to buy anything... Show you how I have him built on the mini account, and then we'll take him into battle. So here, you can see level 12 on the entire top row, right? The, 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 the weapon, the helmet, and the shield. It's because I'm silver broke. That's why I'm getting the pop-ups too. So again, you have to make do with the gear and the artifacts that you have on any account if you're not a big spender. This is going to be a reality for a lot of people there, but I'm always prioritizing the middle row of artifacts, the percentage-based artifacts. So I have defense percentage on the gauntlets. I have defense percentage on the chest, and I have speed on the boots. Now, I would like, ideally the chest or the gauntlets to be HP percentage because I don't want to totally ignore HP. And you can see 30K, it's not great. Granted, we do have 2,800 on the defense. But other than that, guys, it's really accuracy is going to be the main priority on this champion, right? Accuracy and speed. We don't have a ton of either, but for where I am in the game, this can get me by just fine. And accuracy aura would help even more if I had one on the team. Uh, I have accuracy on the banner. I would advise you guys do the same. Problem is, it's only a four-star accuracy banner, and that's all I have for Demon Spawn on this account. I need to farm more spider. But luckily, I've got Achak, so it's not going to be that big of an issue. I have HP on the amulet. I did get a nice roll there. Maybe if when I fully upgrade the amulet, I will get a double roll on accuracy, and that would be amazing. And then I have attack on the ring. That's not what you want. But again, I have a lack of silver and good artifacts. So I really am using this ring only for the defense and a little bit of HP on the substats here. But I will be swapping that out to be clear soon. I want to go through. I do have him booked on the mini account because I use this guy a lot more than I thought I would when I initially built him, which is always a good feeling, right? So I want to go ahead and build a very traditional mastery setup for you guys on I Check the Winder. And I want to point out also... One specific mastery that I don't see people getting that is really powerful on this dude. So I'm going to get crit rate, crit damage. I'm just going to come down the left-hand side here because I do want to get a little bit of damage out of this champion. So I'm going to go offense side, but I'm just going to keep it. Whoa, I'm going to keep it right at that. I moved the wrong thing on the screen. I need to move myself on the support tree. I'm going to go with accuracy. I'm going to go with all three of the accuracy masteries, this little triangle over here. And then this is the big one, guys, arcane celerity. I see some people going with rapid response. Granted, he does have buffs in his kit, uh, but think about all the debuffs this dude is casting. And then think about having a 30% chance of increasing the term year by 10% when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expires. That's insane turn meter increase for all the spiderlings out there. You can get so much more bang for your buck out of Arcane Celerity. Get that instead of Rapid Response. I cannot repeat that enough to you guys. Uh, now, he does have healing in his kit, so Lay on Hands does work with him as well. So I guess if you didn't need the accuracy, you could come down steadfast, pick up Lay of Hands, pick up, eh, pick up Shield Bearer, Come down Swarm Smiter in Arcane Solari and go that way as well. I do want to pick up Evil Eye and Lore of Steel on this champion. Of course, I want to pick up Master Hexer as well. When we look at his abilities, the HP burn will be brought up to a 95% at landing. Uh, if we do have the, uh, excuse me, the Sniper Mastery. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. Alternatively, there's nothing wrong with going with Spirit Haste as well. And then we'll kind of finish things out with... Uh, we're not casting any shields. I'm just going to go with Exalt and Death, right? So these are going to be the masteries. Nice and simple here. We came down the left-hand side of offense and the right-hand side of support. But again, I really want to point out Arcane Solari and how powerful that can be on this champion. Let's go ahead and run him in Spider. So before we get to Spider, guys, I do want to go inside the arena because I am having so much fun. That's right. I checked the Wender, and even though I said he's not a typical arena champion, I'm having so much fun with the synergy of a Burner or two alongside Tormin. It's really my main go-to on the mini account arena strategy. Tormin has this ability where uh, attacks all enemies, plays block uh, buffs, and 100% heal reduction on targets under or freeze, right? So we have freeze from Achak, obviously. And then a provoke for one turn on targets not under freeze. Decrease the cooldown of a random skill of each ally by one turn for each enemy attacked under a freeze and HP burn. 
So you can already see the free synergy from Tormund because of his passive, right? And then uh, also ignoring defense on targets under freeze and burns. Uh, instantly activates his skill whenever an enemy under a freeze and a burn takes damage from a burn. So we, when we put uh, Tormund on a team with two freeze slash burners in Skrank and Attract the Wenderin, uh, there's just amazing synergy together. So again, this is not a champion that you typically see inside the arena but it's definitely a special kind of combination that you can have a lot of fun with so the burner goes first there's the burns uh the freeze oh we actually need Atchak to come in with the freeze first we do land the provokes though so it's it's going to be just fine but let's go in there and switch that part up because look at this now the freeze we're going to get torment just attacking endlessly right endlessly uh you can see he absolutely cleans up so uh you can use a, a champion with other combinations than just torment obviously but let's make sure that we go in here and open up and it is noteworthy that attack the Wenderin always will open up with the a2 so if you do want to open up with the a3 such as in the spider uh spider's den uh you do want to go ahead and go in there and priority prioritize that as well so here we go guys Check it out. Come in with a burn. Come in here with the freeze. And then Tormund just goes nuts. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, guys? Come on. We got to watch it one more time. I have way too much fun with this team, man. I really do. It's so much fun. I, I don't know why. Just seeing Tormund endlessly AoE attack, there's something really fun about it. All right, so here we go. We landed a few freezes, and that's that's all it takes, right? That's all it takes. All we need is that burn to tick, because they're all under freeze, too, or at least three of them. And Tormund's just going to keep hammering away with his A1, which is an AoE attack. So you can have... <coughs> excuse me. Choke up talking about my man in the arena. You can have a lot of fun with Achak and Tormund if you're lucky enough to have that champion. Uh, let me go ahead and show you a spider run here. So a couple of things to note about this team before we go in here, guys, is that we lose Coltar in this battle. She dies in this battle, along with Skrank, which is totally fine. Uh, the reason, and we pointed this out quite a bit here on the channel, but it's really all about turn meter, right? Or excuse me, about rotation where they are in the... Uh, in the rotation. So, Scylla the Drakes is number two. She's going to revive Skrank first. We want to make sure she's reviving Skrank before Coltart for this run to work, and that's exactly what's going to happen as you guys are about to witness. Now, keep in mind, guys, two things. Number one, I want your eyes to be peeled on the Twisted Hunger passive of Atchak the Wender in here. Once we get going, once we set things up, and again, we're prioritizing that A3, going in there, landing all the freezes on the Spiderlings. Look at this, guys. Look at all the heals and turn. Look at this. Twisted Hunger, Twisted Hunger, Twisted Hunger, all over the place. Look at the increased turn meter boost on everybody constantly. It's really, really, truly a sight to behold. Is it not? You can like duo Spider 25 with better gear than me. Uh, you can duo Spider 25 with like a Mordecai and an Achak the Wender and just truly an amazing champion. And also the second thing I wanted to notate again for you guys is really frankly how crappy this build is in terms of the artifacts, right? The quality of artifacts. The stats are not that great. The accuracy is not that high. I mean, things just aren't that great on this champion. The speed's not that great. But we, as I said in the beginning, it does not matter, right? It doesn't matter. We're just utilizing the passive. All that matters is the accuracy is enough to land those freezes. And of course, the more speed, the merrier. That way we can get some, uh, you know, some boost to the rest of the team. But we actually didn't lose Cold Heart there, so I stand corrected. Either way, we do get Skrank back up. I do want to show you guys really quickly the multipliers here, but let me just wait till the spider run is over. Uh, now we land that burn again from Skrank. I love Skrank, dude. What a cool champion. Uh, really, I think, for my money... Skrank, who I've already done a guide on on this account, is the best epic burner out there in the game, uh, especially being Void Affinity, right? There's no weak affinity matchup for him. So again, we come in there. We do lose Cold Heart that time, but again, it's not a big issue there. Cold Heart's just there for, you know, help doing damage, right? <laughs> That's about it. So it's nice to have her, but she's not mandatory for this team. The mandatory champions are the burner, UDK, 
and Achek Nwenderen, of course, still helps out as well, right? Uh, so there we have it, guys. Sub two minutes with crappy gear on all my champions. Uh, this is what has enabled me to actually get decent accessories now on my account. And it's really thanks to the combination of Skrank and the combination of Achek Nwenderen. Uh, before I let you go, guys, again, no lore, unfortunately, but shout out to hellhades.com. A 3.5 uh, multiplier on the A1 and a 5.5 multiplier on the A3 ability as well. Well, they recommend cruelty for a debuffer in commanding presence as an aura lead. I actually really uh, agree with both of those, right, on this. Sometimes I don't always agree with the blessing recommendations there, but this time it is absolutely spot on in my opinion. Do not sleep ever. I don't have an awakening, unfortunately, here. But do not sleep on cruelty. Even on support champions, right? I want to repeat that. Do not sleep on the cruelty blessing even on support champions. They don't need to be a nuker to take advantage of decreased target's defense per hit. Up to 40% for champions, 20% for bosses when it's fully awakened. Uh, that's very powerful. All you have to do is hit them to decrease their defense. So that would be an amazing, uh, for me, for my money, that would be an amazing option for Achak the Wenderin. Dark Resolve is always a good one as well. Indomitable Spirit is always a good one. Uh, and of course, uh, Commanding Presence, as uh, the Hades website mentioned as well, strengthening your team aura. It's good to have at least one champion on your squad with this blessing. Guys, that's going to do it for the video. Let me know if you love this champion as much as I clearly do. He's made a massive difference to my account. And again, I want to emphasize at the end of this video that he he's not just a spider specialist right you can really use him as a support champion in general and a control champion and a healer in basically any dungeon especially against magic affinity or force affinity dungeons out there or void thank you for watching and as always take care guys